you're good. Let me introduce myself. Um, I am uh, Dr. Catherine Jones Hazeldine. I've been out here for about a decade now, and when I first started out here, um, a family that I was working with, um, the child got tired of calling me Dr. Catherine Jones Hazeldine, and so they started calling me Dr. Kate, and it sort of stuck in the clinic that I was working in, and then sort of spread from there. And so anymore, that's pretty much what I go by. Um, I worked for many years uh, with the Monroe Meyer Institute out of the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And about three years ago, I took those clinics private, and we are now known as Western Nebraska Behavioral Health. We have a variety of clinical sites currently, sort of all over the panhandle. Um, our clinicians go to a different community pretty much every day of the week. We currently have eight clinicians who work with me, and we are in Rushville, Gordon, Chadron, Crawford, help me out guys, Alliance, Valentine, Bridgeport, and we start Scotts Bluff this week. What did I miss? I got him? Okay. We also have a clinic at Chadron State College, and we do work with a Head Start in various communities. So I've been in practice out here in the Panhandle about 10 years, and our specialty really is working with kids and families. Because I trained at Monroe Meyer, how many of you are familiar with Monroe Meyer? Okay. So you won't be surprised to hear that a lot of my training was fairly behavioral in nature, right? This is, this is the specialty of Monroe Meyer, is working with kids with developmental disabilities, with behavioral challenges, and doing so from a fairly behavioral standpoint. Um, strategies that will work, strategies that are empirically supported, and that we can implement. We have always um, worked pretty closely with area schools in a variety of ways. We tend to be part of IEP teams. Um, in several of our communities, we go directly into the schools and provide services right there on site to help uh, increase access to behavioral health stu services for students at need. The other side of the picture is that I have a fairly long connection with education myself. Um, you can't swing a cat at our family reunions without hitting somebody who has an educational career. My grandmother, both parents, my brother, two sisters-in-law, my father-in-law, aunts and uncles, various cousins, um, I myself have taught in a primary school setting, I've taught at college level, I've taught reading classes, and I think this is important because I feel like a fair amount of the time, and tell me if you have noticed this as well, I feel like there tends to be a bit of a disconnect between behavioral health or mental health and education. And I feel like sometimes when we as mental health providers or behavioral health providers come into school settings and make recommendations, Sometimes they don't fit. They don't fit the realities of the educational environment um, because there maybe isn't that understanding. What, what do you guys think? Okay, so my hope is that because of these dual connections, we can avoid some of that and we can be informed as we go into these settings um, by both our behavioral health background but also our educational understanding. Um, of, of the challenges and the limitations that you are all dealing with in the environment so that when we make recommendations, they're practical recommendations, they're doable recommendations, they're useful recommendations, and they're recommendations that are gonna help your students. Um, I am also the member of, a member of the Special Education Advisory Council. Are you guys familiar with that council? It's known as SEAC, and every state has one. Uh, the Nebraska Special Education Advisory Council meets quarterly, um, and it is the primary advisory board to uh, the State Department of Education regarding special education matters. So um, the, the team gets together, we discuss issues related to special education in the state of Nebraska from parent perspectives, from educator perspectives, from lawmaker perspectives, and that helps to, to drive the system. Um, furthermore, I'm, I'm myself the parent of a child on an IEP. My middle son was adopted from foster care at age eight and came to us already diagnosed with ADHD and Asperger's um, and has been on an IEP um, for ever, really. And so I've been able to also see the special education system and see the IEP process and the behavioral plan process <coughs> from the parent perspective. So I've been very fortunate in that regard. Um, and very, very impressed with the professionals who have worked with, with him and, and the results that they've achieved. Um, I bring with me today two lovely ladies, Anitra Warrior and Beth Trenopole are both interns who work within Western Nebraska Behavioral Health Clinics. Uh, Anitra is a pre-doctoral intern um, through the Nebraska Consortium and will be completing her PhD um, and going into practice herself in the spring, summer 
in Winnebago, Nebraska. And Beth is uh, in the process of completing her master's degree in counseling. So um, they're here to help me and keep me on track should I get distracted. <laughs> 